There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ2. It's about logarithmic modeling and average rate of change. Let's pretend it's from the 2002 AP Precalculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. After deciding to get back into shape, Mr. Passwater began a fitness program designed to improve his performance in the one mile run. On the initial day of the fitness program, Mr. Passwater ran one mile to determine his baseline time. At that time, t equals zero, Mr. Passwater ran the one mile distance in 624 seconds. For the next several months, Mr. Passwater was evaluated at the end of each week. Mr. Passwater performed a one mile run and his times were recorded to track his improvement. After 20 weeks, t equals 20, Mr. Passwater ran the one mile run in 502 seconds. Mr. Passwater's one mile run time can be modeled by the function r, given by r of t equals a plus b times the natural log of t plus one, where r of t is the time in seconds for week t, and t is the number of weeks since the initial day of the fitness program. A part one. Use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for constants a and b in the expression for r of t. Each input output pair can be used to write an equation. You get the first equation by plugging in zero for t and setting it equal to 624. We get the second equation by plugging in 20 for t and setting it equal to 502. That's it for A part one. These are the two equations that can be used to find the values of constants A and B. A part two, find the values for A and B as decimal approximations. Let's start with the blue equation. We have A plus B times the natural log of zero plus one is just one, and that is equal to 624. We have memorized that the natural log of one is zero, so this term is equal to zero, and we are left with A is equal to 624. Now let's bring down the red equation, substituting 624 in for A. So we have 624 plus b times the natural log of, and 20 plus one is 21, and that is equal to 502. We have found the value of a, so all we have to do is find the value of b. Let's subtract 624 from both sides. B times the natural log of 21 equals negative 122. We can get B by itself by dividing both sides by the natural log of 21. FRQ2 is calculator active, so we can simply type this expression into the calculator. First, reset your calculator by hitting second plus seven, one, two. That's second plus seven, one, two always start off with a fresh calculator. You can make a vertical fraction by hitting alpha x. We need negative 122 over the natural log of 21. Kabam! The college board will accept three decimal places. However, students often make a mistake trying to round to three decimal places and they wind up losing a point. So my recommendation is always use four decimal places and never try to round. So let's write down negative 40.0719. That's it for A part two. But before I move on, I want to mention why I did not use the regression capabilities of the calculator to find the values of A and B. Why did I sort of do most of this by hand? For A part two, we often enter the input values and output values into a table on the calculator and use regression to find the values of A and B automatically without all of this algebra. We could not do that on this problem, 
because the only logarithmic model that your calculator has is this one, a plus b times the natural log of t. The model they give you in the setup of the problem has to match this form exactly in order to use the regression capabilities of your calculator. Because of the plus one instead of just t, you can't use regression and you have to do it by hand. So be careful and watch out for that. To be clear, if they give you a function in the form a plus b times the log of t, log, that's no good either. You still cannot use regression. It has to be a plus b natural log of t. B part one. Use the given data to find the average rate of change in the amount of time it takes Mr. Passwater to run one mile in seconds per week from t equals zero to t equals 20 weeks. Express your answer as a decimal approximation. Show the computations that lead to your answer. We have memorized that the average rate of change of f on the interval from a to b is f at b minus f at a over b minus a. Mr. Passwater's one mile run time can be modeled by the function r. The average rate of change of r on the interval from zero to 20 is given by r of 20 minus r at zero over 20 minus zero. In the setup, we were given these two input output pairs. Specifically, we know that r at 20 is 502 and r at zero is 624. So that's the numerator over 20 minus zero, which is just 20. We can just put this in the calculator. Actually, before we do that, you never know when you're going to need a decimal value again later in the problem. This was the value of B. So I'd like to store these decimals as letter B before I lose the information. So immediately hit store and then hit alpha B and enter. If we need the value of B again later, we can just use the letter B without losing decimal place accuracy. While we are at it, we might as well store 624 into letter A. Just type 624 and then store alpha A enter. Now let's go ahead and type in this expression, which will give us the decimal approximation for the average rate of change of R. They want a decimal approximation. So let's take an extra step and type in negative 61 divided by 10. Well, okay, we could have done that. In our heads, you just move the decimal one place to the left and you get negative 6.1. If this were a longer decimal, I would define this as being equal to the letter C, and I would store this decimal as letter C on the calculator. However, uh, this number is so simple that we can just stick with using negative 6.1. That's it for B part one. You don't need to write any units or anything to get full credit. In fact, in a way it's safer not to. Moving on to B part two. Interpret the meaning of your answer from part one in the context of the problem. Your interpretation should include these three things, the meaning of the function, how the function is changing, and the time interval. For each part of your interpretation, you must include the units. Let's start with the meaning of the function which I like to copy word for word from the setup. Mr. Passwater's one mile runtime is what's modeled by the function r. So the meaning of the function r is Mr. Passwater's one mile runtime. So start by writing down Mr. Passwater's one mile runtime, but don't forget the units. We are told that r of t is the time in seconds. Next, we describe how the function is changing. Specifically, we will say how fast the function is increasing or decreasing. If the average rate of change is positive, we will say that the function is increasing.
If the average rate of change is negative, then the function is decreasing. The fact that the average rate of change is negative 6.1 means that Mr. Passwater's one mile run time is decreasing by 6.1. Notice I did not say negative 6.1. The negative is suggested by the word decreasing. It's sort of baked in. If you say decreasing by negative 6.1, that actually means increasing. Don't forget the units. The College Board is very kind, and they always give you the units of the average rate of change right here. In this case, the average rate of change is in seconds per week, so make sure you say is decreasing by 6.1 seconds per week. Finally, squeeze in the phrase on average before stating the time interval including units, which in this case is from t equals 0 to t equals 20 weeks. Let's review. Your interpretation of the average rate of change should have three parts to it. First, you state the meaning of the main function with units. Second, you describe how fast the main function is increasing or decreasing with units, which are always included. And finally, you state the time interval over which the average rate of change was calculated, not forgetting the units. Putting it all together, we have Mr. Passwater's one mile runtime in seconds is decreasing by 6.1 seconds per week on average from t equals zero to t equals 20 weeks. B part three. Consider the average rates of change of R from t equals 20 to t equals p weeks, where p is greater than 20. Are these average rates of change less than or greater than the average rate of change from t equals zero to t equals 20 weeks, found in part one? Explain your reasoning. R of t is given by this logarithmic equation, where the value of A is 624, and the value of b is negative 40.0719. I'm going to copy this equation down, filling in the values for a and b. r of t is this logarithmic equation. I'm going to temporarily reverse the order of these two terms to make it easier to see what transformations will turn the parent function y equals natural log t into r of t. We have memorized that the parent function y equals natural log t looks like this. The negative sign in the front causes a reflection over the x-axis, which turns r of t upside down compared to the parent function. So it looks more like this. The 40, ignoring the negative sign for a moment, is a vertical dilation by a factor of 40. That doesn't really change the look of the graph nor does the vertical translation by 624. This goes up and down forever, so shifting it uh, up by 624, you wouldn't really notice it. On the other hand, the t plus one is a translation left one, and uh, that will cause the graph to strike the y-axis and have an intercept, which it normally wouldn't have. This is basically what r of t looks like. If you did not remember what the parent function looked like, or if you were unsure how the transformations would affect the graph, you could use your graphing calculator to see what r of t looks like. All we have to do is enter r of t as y1 on the graphing calculator. Remember, we even stored the values of a and b into letter A and letter B on the calculator. So all we have to do is go to Y1 and literally type in A plus B natural log of T plus one. Well, we'll have to use an X instead of a T. Go to Y1, type in alpha A plus alpha B, and then natural log of X plus one. Before we hit graph, we need to adjust the window to make sure that the output value is bigger than 624 and the input value is bigger than 20. 
Let's hit the window button and change X min and X max to adjust the input values that we're going to see. The largest input value that we see in the data is 20. So X max needs to be something bigger than 20. Let's make it 30. X min really could be zero, uh, but I'm going to make it negative one just so I can clearly see the Y axis. The largest output value that we saw was 600 and something. So uh, let's make Y max be 700. Now let's hit graph and see what we've got. Okay, so this is uh, how you can see what R of T looks like using the graphing calculator. In fact, I'm going to adjust my sketch a tiny bit based on what we saw. What matters is that R of T is concave up for T greater than zero. We have learned that when a function is concave up, the rates of change of that function are increasing. So the rates of change of R of T are increasing for t greater than zero. So the rate of change of r of t on the interval from 20 to p will be greater than the rate of change of r of t on the interval from zero to 20. Students will often lose a point on this problem for not being specific enough. For example, make sure you say r of t is concave up. Don't say the curve is concave up or the function is concave up or something vague like that. And you have to say the rates of change of R of T are increasing. Don't just say the rate of change is increasing. Part C, Mr. Passwater plans to continue with the fitness program until his one mile run time reaches 450 seconds. Explain how this information can be used to determine the domain limitations for model R. We can use the graphing calculator to find where R of T is equal to 450. It's good that we typed R of T in as Y1. So all we need to do is let Y2 equal 450 and find the intersection point. Hit Y equals and enter 450 as Y2. Hit graph and let's see what we've got. The intersection point is going to occur way off the screen to the right. So we need to adjust the window and we need to increase X max by a lot. Um, let's make it 100. Let's hit graph and see what we've got. Kabam, the intersection point is right here. Let's find it by hitting second trace and choosing option five for intersect. Move the pointer close to the point of intersection and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. 75.8755. We just saw that R at 75.8755 is equal to 450. Since Mr. Passwater will stop the fitness program when R of T equals 450, the domain of R of T should be limited to the interval from zero to 75.8755 weeks. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.